Hi guys, welcome to Third Style Garage. My name is Doug. Today I'm gonna to be working on setting up my shop for eventual spray booth. Uh, we just finished a video on installing a three quarter inch PEX airline system. You can see one of the drops behind me here. Um, and today I wanna to install or build a desiccant dryer and a motor guard filter that will provide me dry, clean air for automotive painting. I'm gonna be using a whole house water filtration housing for the desiccant dryer and a motor guard uh, filter uh, for cleaning the air. Um, follow along and we will see how it goes putting these pieces together. Uh, if you like content like this and wanna follow along on the build of the shop as well as restoration of currently a 66 Mustang convertible, uh, you can see the front of it right here. Um, also, this fall, I'm going to be working on a 66 Volkswagen Beetle convertible. Love it if you'd uh, click the subscribe button. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions in the comments below, and I'll respond as well. Thanks. Have a great day. I'm going to start today with a desiccant dryer um, off Amazon uh, pretty affordably. I bought this whole house air filter. Uh, it's a seems to be a little bit larger than a quart size, incredibly thick plastic. Um, not made for this, so do this at your own risk. Um, but water system and houses, I think this was rated to go to 100, 125 PSI. So I'll be pushing it slightly beyond that. Uh, if you unscrew the housing, the top comes off and there's simply an import. Um, this side simply dumps through. You can see my finger into the exterior part of the housing. Um, that is the import. The outport goes through um, the very bottom of the filter here. Um, and I'm going to be using it in the opposite way. So I'm going to feed the air in, let's say moist air comes in to the out filter, then comes down the tube, down into the bottom of the desiccant dryer where all of the beads are, and the air will flow upward, and then it will come out the import on the top. And then I will be able to watch my desiccant beads I bought blue indicating silica gel off Amazon. Dry and dry is the brand. Um, it's pretty affordable. Um, these beads slowly turn orange as they get damp. So as it gets damp, I'll be able to see the beads turn from blue to orange. And when they have getting to the point where they've all turned orange, then I can take them out, put them in the oven, dry them out, put them back in again. So really the only key to this is I want the moist air to flow down the tube, come out the bottom, flow up, and then I want to avoid my silica beads from flowing out the end. So what I'm gonna do is in this side of the port right here where the escaping air or the out air goes, I'm going to take a stainless steel scotch Bright scrubbing pad, um, and I'm gonna pack that in there as an air filter uh, just to stop any of the beads. Now the silica beads are small little round beads or about an eighth of an inch diameter. Some of them are a little bit smaller, some of them are a little bit larger. So it's not like I'm dealing with a really fine dust where I need a strong filter. So I'm gonna pack this in because the air will flow through this fairly well um, out the port and then um, I will have you know, my beads will then stay in. I'm also, I think, gonna pack a scrubby into this tube just to keep the beads from going back in. I'm not really sure how the air's flow in that direction, how that would happen, but that's my plan. So I'm gonna work on installing these next. Forgot to tell you, um, this copper tube attaches to the bottom of the water filtering system somehow. I didn't have a plan when I bought the filter. I thought maybe I'd use a chunk of PVC pipe um, 
or something like that, and I would glue it on. It's pressure on both sides. There's pressure on the inside of the tube, on the outside of the tube, so I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of force blowing this off. What I realized is the outer diameter of this three quarter inch copper tube was just a hair smaller than the plastic collar inside this, this collar right here. So I just gently heated this up with a torch, pushed it in, let it cool, and it is really tight now. So that was a really easy solution for me. Uh, I'm sure there's a variety of ways that you could attach simply a stem tube to the bottom of your housing filter. Um, all right, I'm gonna do a little assembly work and I'll show you what it looks like. So I have the Scotch-Brite stainless steel scrubbies packed into here. So I will simply take my uh, pipe threaded bushing, screw it in there, which will become a cap, kind of trapping it in there. You can also see that it's packed in on this side. So um, that should stay there. And uh, as the air flows upwards toward this, any beads that want to blow out that should stay in the, in the dryer instead. Um, I also pack some scrubby into the tube. Again, I'm not sure how beads would go upstream of the airflow, but I figured a little bit of a strainer ahead of it can't hurt. Um, and then this simply gets screwed on to the container and the beads are filled in. Um, next, I'm gonna work on plumbing this together with my motor guard filter. Um, so I purchased you know, off Amazon, uh, a motor guard air filter. It's part number M60. It's rated for 125 PSI. Um, and it's a nice cast aluminum, I think, um, housing. And then in the motor guard, uh, in the housing is a paper filter. Uh, which looks remarkably like a toilet paper roll, from which I've heard you can also buy a toilet paper roll and stick it in there. Um, so my plan is to plumb this filter to the dryer. And, uh, sorry, that's turning the wrong thing. Um, plumb the filter to the dryer then I'm going to add a regulator um, with a final dryer on the end of it, simply because that's what I have for painting. I think I'll need 20 to 30 PSI, not the 125, 140 that's coming into the system. Um, and then I'll simply have a quick disconnect after that. Um, connecting the various parts with um, just black pipe fittings and a couple of copper fittings. So. That's not gonna be real exciting to watch. I am using um, a Teflon thread sealant. Um, thread sealant with Teflon made by Permatex um, just to help seal it up because I hate air leaks. Um, I'll show you what it's like when it's put together. Okay, so most of the assembly is done. Air will enter in here through my PEX joint. Um, Transfer from PEX to NPT in this fitting, half inch nipple into a T. Um, what I did then, this is the parts that I had left over as I added a pressure gauge, simply because I had one and I thought it'd be nice to know what my full line pressure was. I didn't have that in the shop anywhere. So then it will go into my desk and dryer, to my motor guard filter, um, here I go from a half to three-eighths bushing, and this goes three-eighths into the motor guard, three-eighths out, down to, um, I'm sorry, I'm off. I think that's a three-quarter. Three-quarter to half inch, half inch in, half inch out, down to three-eighths into my regulator, which I will be able to regulate down uh, for whatever my paint gun requires, and then into a quick disconnect fitting. Um, Next, I need to um, add the desiccant beads to the dryer, and then I will also need to mount this to the wall. Uh, there will be some mounting screws 
three of them in my PEX fitting uh, that will hold up the right side. And then there is a bracket on my regulator right there, uh, which will hold up the left side. Uh, the left side is a little bit farther away from the wall, so I think I will need to add a spacer between um, that bracket and the wall so that it sits parallel. Next, my task is to put on the descant beads, screw this on. I'm a little worried how this is going to get pushed down into the descant beads, but I've never done it before. We'll see how this goes. Taking my desiccant beads. This is a one quart container. I'm hoping that's enough. I'm now fearing that it's not. I will uh, probably need to order another quart of it, um, but there's a little ball descant bead rolling around there that needs to come out. There's a little lip down here that uh, this plastic seals on, and there was a little desiccant bead stuck in there that I didn't want to interfere with the sealing. Yeah, if you wiggle that, that goes on pretty well. There we go. Snug that up and that should be good. All right, so I installed the air filter, um, sorry, the air dryer in the system, turned the air compressor on and I had, uh, even though I put pipe sealing on here, I had it bushing leaking. The bushing that goes into this was leaking on both sides, snugged it up a little bit more, kept leaking, snugged it up more, kept leaking, uh, eventually got it really tight, and then I think it was leaking in between this brass insert and the plastic housing. This was a $19.99 Amazon purchase, um, so I took it all back out and bought this from Lowe's, Whole House Sediment Filter. Um, this was one that I had seen somebody online use. I do like that it has a clear filter, uh, a clear housing instead of blues, which will make it just a touch easier. Um, it also has a bypass valve on the top so that I can bypass if needed. So I'm switching over to try this. I'm currently in the process of attaching the fill tube on the bottom. It's a three quarter inch copper. I soldered a union on the bottom and then got it warm and slid it over top of the plastic nipple that was coming down because there was about a 30 thousandths interference fit. So the hot union kind of resized the um, plastic for me. And then I also added some JB Weld just for like a glue, basically an adhesive. Uh, so I'm letting that cure, then I will uh, put it together and try it. Let you know, we'll see if it works this time. All right, having much better luck this time. So 
Installation is complete, fairly complete. I'm gonna add the desiccant beads. Next, you'll see that my feeding tube is not on center. It's a little bit off to the left, but I don't think that matters. It's still gonna blow the air through it. Um, in addition to, as I did with the previous one, I'm running the, my fingers are dirty. Um, running the air through in the opposite direction. So if you can see there's an arrow, my air is gonna flow from the right to the left, which will force it to go down the tube, up through the desiccant beads, and then out here. I did fill this uh, two, inch length, two inch length of pipe with a stainless steel uh, scrubby, similar to you can see in the bottom of here. So that way that will prevent any desiccant beads from blowing out of here and going into there. If they do happen to go through or dust from the beads, uh, the filter here will filter it out before it goes into the regulator and out my air hose. So this will be my one for painting. I did plumb in a line. You can see I'm at about 120 PSI right now with another quick coupler there. So this will be my one for running air tools. This will be my one for painting. Uh, probably a little excessive now. I've got nine of them around the shop uh, to tie into. Uh, I'd like to find some maybe 10 foot long, really soft, pliable air hoses that I can use for tools. Um, the ones that I have now are cheap and 25 years old and they are really stiff and hard. So if anybody has any recommendations, let me know. Um, last step is to put the desiccant beads in here and fill that up. I did install a shutoff because um, I feel like I don't need pressure to this whole system all of the time. Plus I was having so many problems with it leaking earlier, all with this dryer that I'm like, ah, it's like a drain in the whole shop. So uh, I did install a, a ball valve there. Um, Really happy with the results. Let's put the beads in there. And we're done. Put the dust and beads in. One quart fills it all the way up to the top perfectly. Did not know that would happen. That was nice. Put a little screw in the side to hang my... Uh, this is the wrench that you use to tighten the housing. You also use this uh, to change it from filter to off to bypass in case I ever need to do that. Um, dryers there, can replace the filter elements. Here's my regulator. You can see I'm regulated down to about 37 PSI right now. Uh, I don't need to be lower than that for painting. And currently I'm at about 120 PSI with the valve open. No leaks in the system. That makes me happy. Hi right, guys, well that's a wrap on today's video. Thanks for being part of Third Style Garage. Please click the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, post a comment if uh, I can respond at all and, and help you with your shop system. If you have things that you've learned along the way that you want to share with others or things you would have done differently, post that in the comments below so we can all learn from it as well. Thanks, have a great day and uh, stay tuned for more. If you like shop updates like this, or we're gonna be working on a Beetle convertible or continue to work on the Mustang in the background. Take care, be nice to each other, and remember the most important thing you need is a willingness to try.